What is up Troop? In today's video, we're gonna look at mid side EQ and its practical applications at the end of your mix or even during your mix. Basically, what's the purpose of it and what can we do with it that's more advanced than your standard left right stereo EQ? Today's tutorial is sponsored by DistroKid. They are my digital music distributor. If you want to get your music out to all of the major streaming and download stores, check the description below this video for a discount on your first year distributing your music today. All right, so first things first, how does mid side work? Essentially think of it like this. When you've got your mix, you've panned things to left and right and something like a kick drum generally stays right in the center, right? Now you listen to that as a stereo field. You've got your left and right and you've got that phantom center, things that appear to be in the middle. What mid side does via a process of inverting one signal, it gives you actual access to the things that are in the stereo field, so the sides and the things that are in the center, so the mids. Okay, so ozone is useful here because it has mid side on just about everything that would be viable. So if I jump to the dynamic section, up the top here, we've got mid side mode enabled and then we've got the mids and the sides. And this effectively means that I can compress the mids and the sides separately. So in my mix where the kick drum's really dead center, that can be compressed while leaving the sides alone. Anything that such as reverb could be maintained. Or the alternative, I can really compress the sides and bring all the reverb down in the low ends while leaving the kick drum dead center. Let's have a quick listen, for example. Let's now have a look at that in context of an EQ. Let's add in the equalizer to here. We'll just make sure it's in an appropriate place. Now at the top here, we're gonna switch it over to mid side and that gives us that same breakdown that we had at the top of the compressor. So we've got our mids on the left here and the sides on the right. Whichever one's highlighted in blue, that is our currently affected one. So if we were to now play back this section here. This is now just our mids. So if we were to play back this and solo the mids, like the compressor, this is just our mids. I think this track's relatively well balanced. If you want to watch the mastering session of this, I'll link that below, it's a separate video. But let's say that it's being overwhelmed ever so slightly by the instruments and we can find lots of those instruments here on the sides. Whereas just kind of the delay and the reverb of the vocals there, right? So there's some key things we could do here. So if we jump ourselves over to the sides, for example, we'll solo that out. We could take this down by, let's say, around 1 dB, which is quite a lot in mastering terms. And that's going to help the vocal in the mid stick out a lot more. So what we'll do, we'll listen to it without it, and then we'll introduce it in. The little icon here is just the in and out of the side, so I can disable it. And hopefully you'll hear the vocal sticks out a lot more when the sides are dipped in that region. Think, does that help the vocals stick out a lot more? I think it does, and if this track really needed that, it's something we could do. Now we can do another useful thing here as well. We could do this a lot less. So let's say we go to 0.5 dB instead. Then we can jump back over to the mid side and we could find our approximate point here with the vocal sound. Well. Gonna be round about the same thing and in this case we could 0.5 of a db so we're cutting away at the sides and lifting in the mids now So 
so it gives us lots of benefits to fix things there. Have a look here, we can determine that there's probably some low end going on as well. If we were to grab a low shelf here, press option, and here there's a whole bunch of wobbling and things going on down in the low end. In the sides, we probably don't want that. Now, our imager will tell us phase correlation wise, it's completely out at the moment. That's because we're using just the sides. You can see we've got a flat strip along the bottom. If we look at our whole mix, so our correlation is fine around here. But in stereo, this low noise doesn't really serve any use, does it? I mean, if we can have a listen to it. no real purpose to it. So using side mode, we could put a shelf in or a pass in and roll it away. You need to discern where this really starts affecting things. But if that low end serves no benefit whatsoever, we can just roll it away. The track's gonna sound a lot tighter in the low end. If we look at our correlation meter, it's gonna be even better response wise. And the further up we bring that, the more perfect effectively it's going to be in terms of balance. But we've lost too much of the sides there. So there's a delicate balance to be had. Those are the two main things that I would do with mid-side EQ, especially at a mastering phase. If you want to see the full mastering process for this track, you should watch this video next, and I'll guide you through that, because we use a little bit more than ozone. And if you want to see the entire production of this track, check out this video, where we break down how I made the track from start to finish. I'd like to see you in those videos. Take care.